All right. Probably should have put the windshield wipers up last night, but should be okay. Oh my God. Oh, uh, we made it. It's like seven degrees out. The lake is partially frozen for the first time this year. That's cool to see. It's pretty rare to get a mostly sunny morning when it's like eight degrees here in Cleveland without at least some lake effect cloud cover. Check this out. I'm so used to the sun rising from right over here during summer. It's all the way over here. <laughs> so before I get frostbite, let's get out of here and learn about the polar vortex. This is the Earth looking straight at the North Pole. The colors represent the different temperatures of the air masses around 30,000 feet in the atmosphere. Pretty unsurprisingly, you might notice that the air above the North Pole is very cold and it's also at a very low pressure. This large puddle of air is known as the polar vortex. There are actually polar vortices, which are little smaller areas of low pressure and cold air rotating around a common center, but I'm gonna refer to it just as the polar vortex. Now, normally winds within the polar vortex spin from west to east, keeping all the air in a nice tight puddle. But everything on the planet goes through cycles and weather is no different. Several times a decade, these winds actually slow down in reverse direction, causing the cold air to spill outwards from the pole into the mid-latitudes. In January of 2014, we had an extremely weak polar vortex with cold air spinning out in all directions. Some of this air dove south into the central Midwest and caused temperatures well below zero. A lot of people my age who grew up in the Midwest probably remember that event. It actually extended our winter break by quite a few days. It was, it was quite nice. In 2015, the polar vortex dipped down into the Northeast, dropping an extra three feet of snow on Boston, giving the city its highest seasonal snowfall on record. The week of New Year's 2018, record low temperatures were set in Omaha, Nebraska and Buffalo, New York. But nothing compares to what happened last February. The thing that triggers the weakening of the polar vortex is called a sudden stratospheric warming. This is when the very top level of the polar vortex warms tens of degrees Fahrenheit within a matter of a few days. This typically happens between five and 10 times a decade. Regarding the 2021 event, on January 5th, increased temperatures in the stratosphere were noticed, and from that time, it can take anywhere from zero to 30 days for the polar vortex to actually dive south and descend thousands of feet to the surface. And boy, did it ever. It caused three separate winter storm events between February 11th and February 20th, the most infamous being the snow and freezing temperatures that affected Texas. Waco recorded temperatures below freezing for a consecutive 205 hours and Dallas-Fort Worth recorded 232 with a small three hour break on Monday afternoon, but who's counting really? This right here is my favorite picture from Houston that shows a palm tree covered in snow. I wish I could see that in person. And of course, Texas having a separate power grid from the rest of the US made it a lot easier for them to avoid federal regulations and accrue $200 billion in damages from a chance encounter with the polar vortex. I'm not getting into that political mess, but something has to be done in the future. There is indeed some evidence that the changing climate, uh, specifically the less ice in the Arctic, can have an indirect effect on when these sudden stratospheric warmings occur. And if you recall, that is what actually triggers the weakening of the polar vortex itself. For most of us here in the US, we're currently in the coldest 30 day stretch out of the entire year. So I hope that you found some helpful information in this video about what's currently going on out there. In fact, take a look at this. Every single year that I want a white Christmas, we end up getting a ton of snow in late January, early February. And at that point, it's completely useless. If you guys want to help me out, the only thing you got to do is like, subscribe, comment, or share. One of those things goes a long way. And I'll see you guys on the next Weatherbox Wednesday.